cats. You think you know them, and then they do something completely wild. Believe it or not, our moggies share 96% of their genes with a tiger. Along with traits from every fantastic feline in the cat family. So why did one of the world's deadliest predators swap wilderness for suburbia? And how much of the wild is still left in them? This series explores cats like never before, tracing their epic journey from apex hunter to living room lounger. This time, we discover how wild cats became such popular pets and global internet stars. We reveal how a kitten's cute looks have been key to their success. Investigate rumors of the world's biggest pet cat. I've never seen a cat as big as this before. It's a massive cat. And discover how cats aren't quite the solitary creatures we once thought. Cats have a story to tell. And it's wilder than you could ever imagine. affectionate, serene, but savage, tame, but supposedly untrainable. That's because, despite living alongside us for thousands of years, they are in many ways still wild animals. And yet, we adore them. Worldwide, there are three times more domestic cats than dogs. And they are believed to be the world's most popular pets. To understand how this came about, we need to start at the beginning with two young kittens. Just one day old, they are completely dependent on mum. For the first week of their lives, their world is dark and virtually silent. Their eyes are closed tight and they are as good as death. Just one sense is crucial to their survival, their sense of smell. They sniff out their mother's milk and each kitten finds its own nipple to feed from. The next few weeks of these kittens' lives will decide their future. Young cats have a narrow window of time in which they have to learn to be pets. If they have no human contact in the first seven weeks, they'll revert to their wild side and will be really difficult to tame. We follow these kittens over the first three months of their lives and discover how a curious combination of killer instincts and cuteness has been key to the success of cats. So let's start with the cuteness. Kittens are regularly crowned as the world's most adorable animals.
and this is no coincidence. It all comes down to a quirk of our biology. Dr. John Bradshaw is a world expert on domestic cats. Well, there are lots of reasons why we find kittens very cute. Some of it's to do with the fact they're small and vulnerable and furry and they play a lot. But there's some very specific features about their faces too, which trigger some really quite primitive emotions in people. It's known as the cute response. And to show how it works, John has digitally changed an image of a kitten. First of all, we've elongated the snout to make it much more like that of a typical mammal. And you can see already it's lost a lot of its cuteness. And then we've shrunk the eyes down to be, again, much more typical of a mammal's eyes. Now we've basically got an animal which isn't really cute at all. And then you can see, put those features back the way they were and instantly the cuteness is uh, restored. So why do we find those big eyes and small chin so appealing? Well, it reminds us of someone much closer to us. Babies. They share these same features. And as mammals, we're hardwired to react to this. Both kittens and babies stimulate our brains to release the feel-good hormone, dopamine. The same hormone that's released when we fall in love. It's recently been shown that watching cute kittens or babies makes us more cautious. We perform tasks in a more delicate and precise way. It's part of our nurturing instinct. and makes us want to look after them. It's so ingrained in our psyche, even children's teddy bears have been altered to look more kitten-like. Back in the Victorian era, teddy bears looked like bears. They were just little replicas of genuine grizzly bears. But then it was quite quickly discovered that actually bears with very large faces and round faces, rather like that of a kitten, sold much better than the naturalistic ones. Today, the most striking evidence of the cute response is our love of cats on the internet. We are obsessed with them. In the UK alone, nearly four million of us look at images and videos of cats every day. Worldwide, cats have received 26 billion views on YouTube, making them the single most popular category. <laughs> but what's behind this feline fascination? Well, I think the first reason that we see so many cats on the internet is just because they're very cute. They're cute baby type faces, the fact they're very playful, both trigger something in us which instinctively makes us want to watch them. But it's not just about being cute. Puppies also share baby-like features, but clips with dogs don't tend to go viral to the same extent. Push! Yay, bye -bye. It's thought this comes down to their facial expressions. Dogs are eager to please us, and a complex network of facial muscles makes their expressions easy for us to read. have far fewer facial muscles, so their faces show little expression. It means we can decide if they're happy, grumpy, or just indifferent. When you look at a video or a picture of a cat, you can kind of almost project any emotion you want onto it. So putting captions onto pictures of cats, the whole lol cats phenomenon, for example, is actually reasonably straightforward. Our love of cute kittens and internet cats may seem trivial. 
but the primitive emotions that young cats trigger in us was a key part of their journey into our home. We think that this cute response is part of the story of the cat's domestication. The, the first part is probably about the cat being a good hunter and people not necessarily reacting very much to this cuteness. But quite soon after cats began to live in our homes, it's inevitable that people would have started to just notice the fact that these are animals which really excite us and make us want to look after them. And so that would have then speeded up the process of domestication. Kittens may have duped us into caring for them, but don't be fooled. We also used cats for their killer instincts. Meow. Our kittens are now 10 days old. And their eyes have opened for the first time. Like most kittens, their eyes are blue in the early days, as very young cats can't produce the pigment melanin. As they grow up, most eye colours will change to green, yellow, orange or copper. They can hear now too, but they struggle to identify where the sounds are coming from. For now, they're completely dependent on mum. But in the coming weeks, these kittens will develop the skills they need to look after themselves. In the wild, nearly every species of cat is solitary. After spending the first few months with mum, young cats must head off and survive on their own. And strangely, this independent spirit has been one of the reasons cats make such popular pets. There are around 100 million cats in Europe, compared to just 80 million dogs. Dogs tend to be loyal, loving and biddable. Cats are aloof and self-reliant. They are affectionate if they're in the mood. Dogs are social. They see us as part of their pack and crave our company. So whilst cats can exercise themselves, dogs expect a good game of fetch. And whilst cats are happy to be left alone, dogs get lonely and miss us when we're not around. So part of the reason cats have become such popular pets is down to the fact they're low maintenance house guests. With our increasingly busy lives, that suits us both. But the reason cats and humans got together in the first place wasn't just for their cute looks or independent nature. Curiously, it was because cats were such fantastic hunters. And they still have the agility of a top predator. They can leap five times their own height. the equivalent of us jumping two double-decker buses. It's a trick they share with their bird-catching African cousin, the serval. But they're not just high jumpers. Powerful and muscular hind legs mean they can leap four times their body length. Just like their tree climbing relatives, 
the clouded leopard. Large muscles and fluid between the joints act as shock absorbers. And to ensure they always land the right way up, cats have an inbuilt gyroscope in their inner ear. It means they can orientate themselves in mid-air and always land on all fours. But what's the secret to our cat's extraordinary acrobatics? It all comes down to a unique bit of anatomy, shared by all cats, both wild and domestic. Their backbones. The vertebrae in a cat's spine are more loosely packed than in other mammals, and they have elastic cushions between them. This makes the spine really bendy. Their shoulder blades are attached to their skeleton by muscle, not bone, so they are flexible and incredibly supple. The amazingly flexible spine is one of the things that makes all cats such agile hunters. And our humble house cats punch way above their weight. Size for size, they are stronger than a tiger. And even more agile. Perhaps the ultimate catrobats. But the cat's hunting ability is not just down to their agility. They also have sensory superpowers. Cats can hear things that we can't. Sounds too high for our ears to detect. And it was their ability to hear one particularly high-pitched sound that first made cats useful to us. To demonstrate, Dr. John Bradshaw is setting up a hearing test. What I've got here is a recording of a male mouse calling to a female, which is just the kind of thing that a cat would be really interested in. So we can hear it. I've got it slowed down by a factor of five because the whole of this call is in the ultrasound. It's in an area of hearing that we don't have, but cats do. The speaker is hidden at the back of the room and is used to play the high-pitched squeaks. Sounds way beyond our hearing range. But will Bobby the cat detect it? We can't hear a thing. But this is what Bobby is hearing. High-pitched sounds are really hard to pinpoint. But he soon hones in on the mysterious sound. Got it. When they're hunting, the sound is particularly important because those sounds are very specific. They're the sorts of sounds that mice use to communicate with one another. So when a cat hears those noises, it knows there's a mouse nearby. It's not just about the ears. Our cat's eyes are also finely tuned for hunting small, fast-moving prey. And that's why they've got such unusually shaped pupils. Most mammals, including the big cats, have round pupils. But our moggies and other small wild cats have vertical ones. That's because most small cats, like this tiny sand cat found in the deserts of North Africa, are ambush predators. They lie in wait and pounce on small mammals from close quarters. And because of the way the eyes focus close to the ground, slit pupils are best for judging distances as they strike. So your cat's distinctive eyes are a sign it's an ambush predator.
your pet cat shares another visual trick with their wild cousins. The margay lives high in the jungle canopy in South America and catches its prey in the dark. A mirrored layer in their eyes reflects light back from the retina, maximizing the amount of light the eyes can detect. This eye shine allows cats to see six times better than us in low light. There's one more sense that's been key to the success of all cats. Whiskers. Highly sensitive hairs with up to 200 nerves at their base. Recent research has shown some mammals can use them to do far more than just judge gaps. They can use them to build up mental maps of an area. We've set a young kitten a challenge to find her way through a complex maze in complete darkness. We're only able to see this using night vision cameras. So let's see how she gets on. In the pitch black, she uses her whiskers to find the gaps. This may look straightforward, but she's doing all this in total darkness. This also demonstrates problem-solving skills. As solitary animals, cats need to work out solutions on their own. Their cerebral cortex, the problem-solving part of the brain, is twice as active as that of dogs. So in this sort of challenge, cats do better than dogs. In just 60 seconds, our kitten completes her task with ease. Cats still have the super senses and agility of their wild cousins. But when it comes to their looks, Cats are changing fast. Our kittens are now four weeks old and finding their feet. This is the age of exploration and things don't always go according to plan. Their senses are almost fully developed. They are starting to see, hear and smell just like an adult cat. And they're beginning to play. Ambushing each other helps the brothers develop their coordination. It looks like fun, but this is all about honing their hunting skills. It's this bizarre combination of cuteness and killer instincts that was the key to humans and cats coming together in the first place. But where did it all begin? The cat's journey started 11 million years ago in the jungles of Southeast Asia. Here, the first cat prowled the rainforest. Today, the closest living relative of that first cat still exists. The rare and elusive clouded leopard. They were such successful hunters that cats soon started spreading out of the jungles. 
and as they adapted to new landscapes, they evolved into many weird and wonderful looking species. By 10,000 years ago, cats were found in almost every corner of the world. But they were very much wild, and usually shy animals that kept their distance from us. But then something happened that would change the story of cats forever. Around this time, in an area of the Middle East known as the Fertile Crescent, humans started growing and storing grain for the first time. And that attracted hordes of hungry house mice to our villages. They had a huge appetite for the grain, making them public enemy number one. One bold cat came to our rescue. The wild cat, your cat's closest living relative. He stands about knee height and has a slightly bigger body than your average moggy. To catch the mice, a few bold wildcats moved closer to our villages. And over time, these wild hunters gradually became tamer and tamer. It was in Egypt 4,000 years ago that we had the first evidence of cats coming into our homes. Hieroglyphs show cats hunting birds and vermin amongst the crops. And it was said that if a family cat died, every member of the household would have to shave off their eyebrows as a mark of respect. But to the ancient Egyptians, Cats were far more than just house pets. In the vaults of Manchester Museum, Egyptologist Campbell Price has evidence of their godlike status. Primarily, cats were useful in a sense, they kept vermin down. But the Egyptians had a relationship to animals generally where they saw them as a stage between human beings and gods. And there is something about the aloofness of the cat, which I think appealed particularly to the ancient Egyptians and which today many people associate with ancient Egypt. But there was a much darker side to the Egyptians' feline fascination. As divine creatures, cats were offered as gifts to the gods. For thousands of years, the nature of these gifts remained a mystery. Now, using the latest scanning technology, Campbell and colleagues at Manchester University have been able to peer inside. So what you can see here is uh, a CT scan of a rather nice wooden uh, coffin and the whole uh, coffin has been covered in a layer of plaster and then it's been painted and then uh, there's a nice uh, detail in that the eyes would have been inlaid with, with glass uh, and with stone so it would really have a lifelike uh, appearance when it was finished. This piece we can look inside of and we can see that inside there is a complete cat skeleton in there. The cat's remains were mummified and sold to pilgrims as offerings to the gods. There was such high demand for these animal mummies that cats were bred in vast numbers just to be sacrificed. Centuries later, some of these were shipped to the UK for an unlikely purpose. In 1890, uh, there was a large shipment arrived at the docks in Liverpool and it contained 180,000 cat mummies, which were then sold at auction on the dockside uh, as fertilizer. Uh, but that illustrates the sheer number of these, these cat mummies in Egypt originally. But some lucky cats got away. 
brought onto trading ships as mousers, they started to spread across Europe. Domestic cats first arrived in Britain 2,000 years ago with the Romans and have since spread to nearly every corner of the globe. Today, there are 600 million domestic cats in the world, making them by far the most successful of all the 37 different species of cat. But although we've moved them around the world, cats have always done their own thing. Because our only use for them was as hunters, something they do quite naturally, we've never bred them for a particular purpose. That's certainly not the case with their canine counterparts. Dogs have been domesticated three times longer, some 30,000 years. And we've bred them for really specific purposes. But apart from catching mice, Cats haven't really helped us at all. In fact, we've only started breeding cats in the last 200 years, and purely for their looks. On today's catwalk, there's an array of fantastic looking models. Bengal cats were originally hybrids of the domestic cat and a wild cat called the Asian leopard cat they were bred for their exotic coats. The Selkirk Rex looks like he's had a perm. A genetic mutation caused those curly locks. And perhaps the oddest of all breeds, the Sphinx was selectively bred for its baldness. In some cats, even the whiskers are lost. The oldest breed of domestic cat is today perhaps the most famous of all. Its story began in the far-flung reaches of Southeast Asia. The Siamese cat. They have pale bodies and darker extremities, like their ears, feet and tail. This distinctive coloration is all down to a bizarre genetic mutation. Only the fur on the cooler parts of the body produce any color pigment. It means their warm bodies are white, but the cooler extremities, like the ears, are black. The same mutation made their eyes an azure blue. These distinctive features have made Siamese cats one of the most popular breeds of all. Today, our quest for ever more exotic looking cats has created more than 40 weird and wonderful breeds. But it's not just the cat's looks we're changing. These supposedly solitary creatures are ganging up. Cats. They've been living alongside us for 10,000 years they still share many of the instincts of their wild cousins. And one of the most fundamental things about cats is that they are solitary. Or so we thought. On an island off the coast of southern Japan, something really strange is happening. Cats 
cats have stopped being loners and started living in gangs. It's forcing biologists to rethink what they know about domestic cats. This is Ayashima Island, a.k.a. Cat Island. Here, cats outnumber people six to one. And they're causing chaos. The few people left on the island have to lock their doors to stop would-be cat burglars. And then there are the cat fights. Their pained cries echo around the island. And when local fisherman Mr. Kamimoto returns to harbour, he's ambushed. There are no prizes for guessing what they're after. Cats were first brought to the island when a plague of mice were destroying the fishermen's nets. The cats were so good at catching mice, they soon solved the fishermen's problems. But they were breeding so quickly, the locals now had another problem on their hands, a plague of cats. It's all those fish dinners from Mr. Kamimoto and the other fishermen that explains why these cats ganged up. When there's lots of food around in a small area, cats can forego their solitary nature and learn to live alongside each other. It's altered their behavior in other ways too. Just like lions, female cats here share the nursing and care of each other's kittens. It's changed the way biologists think of cats. Previously, it was thought lions were the only truly social cat. But given the right conditions, it seems domestic cats can be too. Closer to home, cats are surprising us in other ways. They're not growing in number, but they do seem to be growing in size. In a small town in Yorkshire, there are rumors of the biggest cat in the world. Say hello to Ludo, a two-year-old Maine Coon. Ever since he was a kitten, his owner Kelsey has known he was bigger than your average cat. We were keeping a record as he grew of what his weight and everything was, and we checked his size in against all the others for their age. Say at three months old, they were more like the size of a five-month-old. At full stretch, Ludo is more than a metre in length. Maine Coons originate from the state of Maine in America. Large bodies and thick fur help them keep warm in the snowy New England winters. But in Yorkshire, Ludo's size has alarmed some house guests. We see him every day, so we're used to his size, but other people's reactions to him when they meet him, most are very wary, and they'll ask if he's friendly as well. It makes us chuckle, really, because we know what he's like. Wake up! Wake up! 
Kelsey suspects that Ludo's gigantic size could make him a record breaker. So she's taking him to the local vet, where he'll be officially measured for the Guinness World Records. He's quite heavy, so carrying the big carrier, it's a bit of a struggle, but he's very well behaved, so... The adjudicator is Richard Stenning. I've never seen a cat as big as this before. I've obviously seen many cats in my life. I've never adjudicated this Guinness World Records title before, so it's a massive cat. The record is based on the length of the cat, from the nose to the tip of the tail. Three measurements are taken and the average is used. The current record stands at 110 centimetres. The first one was 115. So they're looking good. And then the second two were 120. So the average of those three is 118.3 centimetres. So congratulations on your you. Guinness World Records title. Well done. Whilst we may be shaping cats by breeding features we like, there's one instinct cats find hard to shake off. their hunting instinct. It's so ingrained, it's even highly developed in kittens. Our brothers are now 12 weeks old and look much more like young adults. There's nothing they like more than a game of mouse and cat. They instinctively play with different toys in different ways. Small toy mice are pounced upon with the front paws and bitten. Larger toys are tackled with more caution. They are held with the front paws and then swiped at with the hind legs. It mimics natural hunting behavior. Larger prey, like a rat, could injure them so cats instinctively know to keep them away from their head. But these kittens' wild side has been somewhat tamed. In their first few weeks, they've had lots of love and attention. Without any contact with people, they could have reverted to their wilder form and turned feral. But because they've had lots of cuddles, they'll grow up to accept us and be well-rounded pets. Will our house pets ever shake off this wilder side? Cat expert Dr. John Bradshaw believes they may be slowly changing. Well, I think the, the cat is almost something of a paradox. It's an animal which we domesticated for a very specific reason, which was to hunt for us. And because of that, we retained its intrinsic wildness all the way through domestication in a way that we haven't done with any other domestic animal. But now, our demands on the cat are changing. Cats are really only part of the way down the road to domestication. Suddenly, in the last 20 or 30 years, we've decided that we don't want our cats to go hunting all the time. I suspect that is gradually going to be bred out of them over the next few decades or centuries. The cat will be able to change into an animal which is much more suited to urban living, particularly. The cat's journey into our homes has been an epic one, spanning 11 million years. From the jungles of Asia to the deserts of the Middle East and ultimately onto our sofas. Today, they are believed to be the world's most popular pets and global stars of the internet. But the journey isn't over. As we breed cats to be less wild hunter, more mild-mannered house pets, they'll continue to evolve. In the future, cats are likely to behave more like dogs. So taking the cat for a walk could be part of the daily routine. And as we continue to breed cats for their looks, 
they'll become even cuter. Our cute response, triggered because kittens share those same features as human babies, is part of the reason we brought cats into our homes several thousand years ago. And it's still why we love them today. Next time, we meet the feline Mythbusters. The rarest and most bizarre cats of all. We reveal the secrets they share with our pet Moggies that help them conquer the harshest landscapes on the planet. These are the cats that break all the rules. Will love conquer money? Frank and Mary hope so in Dr. Thorne from the creator of Downton Abbey, our brand new drama, is next tonight. While tomorrow, Davina McCall is where temperatures can drop to minus 40 degrees in the Arctic Circle for a taste of life at the extreme at night.